Hi folks and thanks for joining me. You can hear I've got the Jackson Bell receiver still playing here in the background. And uh, it's playing pretty well still. No issues at all. And I'm using my uh, temporary power transformer here off to the side. Anyway, let's use the wire gauge from the existing or the old Pepco power transformer that I saved. And uh, let's see if we can reverse engineer the power transformer to better understand what the capabilities of that power transformer were. Calculate the high voltage requirements for this receiver since there's no schematic available. And uh, the, the current capabilities as well of the old power transformer for the high voltage windings in addition to the 6.3 uh, volt winding and the 5 volt winding. I think that will give us a good indicator as well. Was it undersized initially and is that why it failed or did a capacitor, you know, just short out and take the uh, power transformer out? So uh, let's get started. Thanks for watching. Here's what's left of the bobbin itself. And you can see I've jotted down the measurements. It's uh, one inch by one inch. And that can also be confirmed by the E pieces. Again, this is one inch across. And if I were to stack all the E pieces on top of each other and get the height, it's also one inch. So to calculate the core area in square inches, it's simply one inch times one inch equals one inch. And you can see the standard calculation for uh, computing watts or really volt amps according to another article that I've read. We'll expand more on that later. But you can take the uh, square root of the watts and divide it by 5.58 and that will give you the area or we can just rearrange the formula for watts and we can take the uh, area again in square inches times 5.58 squared and you can see doing the math we come up with about 31 watts would be the capability of this particular transformer so somewhere around 30 watts or so very small power transformer for this receiver now let's take a look at the wire gauge we'll start with the high voltage winding and work our way down through the other secondaries and see what that tells us. You can see the sample of wire that I pulled from the uh, high voltage winding. I've removed the uh, insulation itself that was used to get down to the uh, bare copper using a mic. About 10 samples taking the average. This comes back to roughly a 38 AWG, again back in the day, not knowing where the transformer was actually uh, the origin or produced. It's a possibility the wire that was used was referenced as a standard wire gauge or SWG. Anyway, today the closest uh, value to the uh, nominal diameter of this is 38 AWG. You can see that's uh, 0 0.004 inches or 0 0.1016 millimeters. Now if we talk about circular mils, that's the diameter in mils squared. So one mil again being one thousandths of an inch. You can calculate circular mils by taking the uh, nominal diameter in inches, multiply that by one thousand and square that number. So in this case, the 38 AWG comes back to 16 circular mils. So while that's important, a lot of the transformers uh, that are produced under 50 watts, a good safety place to be was typically designing at 1,000 circular mils per amp. But many of the transformers, especially for this period of time where material and space was an issue, they actually pushed the transformers to their limit and designed them at 500 circular mils per amp. So to calculate that number and see where that puts us as far as ampacity max for this wire roughly would have been 16 circular mils divided by 500 and you can see that comes back 
to uh, 0.032 amps or 32 milliamps. So that's really does pushing the capacity of the transformer to the max. So when we go back and look at the receiver in just a moment, we'll limit the voltage and measure the DC current or the AC current of the transformer winding to around 30 milliamps and see where that places the DC and the AC voltage across the plates of the rectifier to kind of gauge possibly the uh, AC voltage requirements of the uh, power transformer itself. Another rule of thumb, and I'll touch on that in just a second, is 2,000 amps per square inch. And that number will get us back to the same result. Let me share that now. As I mentioned, another rule of thumb that was used, and this will come back to 500 circular mils per amp if you do the math as well, but it's 2,000 amps per square inch taking that same example, 38 AWG, you square the uh, diameter times 2,000 and you can see working the uh, math, we end up at the same uh, point, 0 0.032 amps or 32 milliamps. So many of the transformers that were designed uh, back in the day use this guideline as well. Either one works and gets you to that point again stressing the uh, transformer, the capacity of the wire to the uh, max. Let's go back to the receiver for a moment and bring up the uh, receiver on the variac. Measure the current to around 30 milliamps and then we'll measure the uh, transformer voltage that I'm using as a substitute for now just to get a general ballpark of my AC requirements of a new power transformer. Then we'll conclude the video by looking at the 6.3-volt uh, winding in addition to the 5-volt winding and uh, see what that tells. I think you'll uh, find it interesting. You can reference the picture-in-picture uh, -picture to see how I've got my meter hooked up. I'm looking at uh, AC current across one side of the plate. Again, if you do this, you're doing so at your own risk. You're dealing with uh, lethal voltages in this case. And you can see what I've done is uh, vary my variac. Let me turn it down just a bit to get to about uh, 30 milliamps here on the meter that you can see. So we're just under that as the receiver continues to uh, warm up on a cool day. So it seems like we're somewhat settled in now, around uh, 30 milliamps of AC current. And it doesn't matter, again, which one of the plates you sample from, or again, I could use the uh, center tap location of the transformer and read the uh, DC current, which would mirror this as well within a, a small percentage. So let's measure the AC voltage at the same point now and see what we have. I'm going to uh, power off the uh, circuit for a moment, hook up the uh, other plate lead here, and just measure the uh, AC and DC voltage and just take note of that for reference for my new power transformer. Again, you can follow along in the picture-in-picture. Picture. Let's just measure uh, AC voltage here off of each of the plates for reference. So 237 will round up and 237. So the transformer, you know, based on a current of around 30 milliamps would be 240 240-240. So I'll make a note of that. Let's uh, look at our uh, DC voltage now and uh, see where that uh, resides. And you can see with the voltage drop from the uh, rectifier itself, that being the efficiency of the uh, rectifier, the field coil, and all the other DC resistance, we're about 171 volts or so DC on the B plus side. 
Now that number I think will be higher once I get the 5W4 tube in. The 5W4 has uh, a lesser voltage drop than the 5Y3. So I expect that number to go up by maybe 5 to 10 volts. So picking the transformer, I'll just make certain that uh, you know we're looking for something around 240-0-240. And of course the uh, current capacity needs to be uh, 30 milliamps or greater. Greater would be better. And then we need to ensure that the uh, 5 volt winding and the 6.3 windings are sized, uh, you know, correctly. Let's uh, finish up the video now by looking at the requirements for the uh, 5 volt and the 6.3 volt windings and uh, better understand too how the original transformer was uh, actually uh, built and uh, being utilized in this receiver. So a sample of the wire used for the 6.3 volt winding with the insulation removed it comes back to a, a 22 and one half gauge so I'm betting the uh, transformer itself back in the day all the wire used was probably referenced back to the uh, standard wire gauge you can see if we do that same math that we did above for 2000 amps per square inch we come back to a max capacity for this particular wire gauge used in the 6.3 volt winding to about 1.14 amps. If we look at the tube complement for the receiver, add up everything including the two dial lamps, and you'll notice I've got a type 46 dial lamp that was used in the receiver, or at least it was found that way. I'm not sure if that's the way it was from the factory. If we add two of those in there, because there's two dial lamps, we're just north of uh, two amps at 2.1 amps. So you can see we're really stressing the uh, 6.3 volt winding based on the uh, wire gauge it was used. This would generate a lot of heat and probably one of the factors that the uh, transformer failed would be my guess. Big difference here, 1.14, 2.1 amps. Again, if um, when I go back and place the dial lamps in, I'll probably go with uh, type 40s that 0.15 amps just to be able to reduce this number down under uh, 2 amps. Let's look at the uh, 5 volt winding for the uh, rectifier tube, that being the 5W4 is what's called out. And for the 5 volt winding you can see my sample here measured at uh, 21 and 1 half gauge. So doing that same uh, math, looking at 2000 amps per square inch, which is the same thing as uh, 500 circular mils per amp. We come up with 1.45 amps. One thing interesting too, you'll notice this particular receiver, someone had substituted a 5Y3 for the 5W4. The 5W4 rectifier I think it's the only rectifier operating at 1.5 amps. So, you know, we're still stretching the transformer right here to uh, max capacity with the 5W4, but you can see the 5Y3 at 2 amps puts it 38% over. So with all the above information, it seems the uh, transformer was marginal at best to even work in this receiver. In particular, the uh, 6.3 volt winding was uh, undersized since this thing has the uh, two dial lamps in addition to the uh, tube heater current, so over two amps of current. When the uh, transformer max capacity was around 1.4 amps. So I can see how this thing kind of gave up not knowing 
the exact high voltage itself and the current that was pulled through that, we know the wire size itself limited the uh, capacity to about uh, 30 to 33 milliamps. All right, let's recap where we're at here. Again, this is all estimated transformer uh, wattage just based on what we learned. We know we've got the uh, voltage times current equals watts. So we can calculate the 5 volt winding at uh, 10 watts, the 6.3 volt winding based on the configuration we found the uh, receiver in with the wrong dial lamps at uh, just over 13. And again, I'm estimating the secondary voltage, uh, 240 for each side of uh, center tap at uh, 30 milliamps. And uh, you can see we're uh, just north of uh, 30 watts of power. Again, assuming the transformer only has an 80% efficiency. That might be a little low. Maybe it's better than that, but probably not. That uh, brings us up to uh, 38 watts. I can take the 38 watts, divide that by 120, and that comes up to about 0.317 amps of current that would flow on the uh, primary side. Let's wrap up by looking at the uh, primary winding itself and uh, see what wire gauge was used there, then we'll conclude the video. Here's a, a short section again of the uh, primary winding measured out numerous times. It came back uh, closest match 26 AWG. So again, if we square the uh, diameter times 2,000, again, to get back to a 500 circular mils per amp, which is stretching everything to the max, the uh, wire would uh, handle 0 0.506 amps. So you can see I calculated 0 0.317, so I think we're safe there on the uh, primary winding based on uh, their design. Again, if you're going to rewind this or wind a new transformer, more circular mills per amp would be uh, better safety-wise and less stressful on the uh, power transformer. So that concludes this video, folks. I appreciate everyone out there uh, watching off to uh, source a, another transformer after I uh, spend some time digging through what I have to see if any of those uh, meet the uh, physical requirements in addition to the electrical requirements. Everyone out there uh, take care and stay well.